Uh, good morning. So today, yeah, I'll start my second lecture about stretch device and mechanical signaling system. Today, I'm going to introduce this paper published in 2012 cell. The title is Heterochromatin Driven Nuclear Softening Protects the Genome Against Mechanical Stress Induced Damage. Some people already read this paper fully, but actually the content and the concept is very nice. So I want to introduce again. So along with the last lecture, they are using stretch. Okay. Also, I introduced this paper in the middle of the content. So as a graphical abstract, you can see that. Ah, and please raise your hand if you read this paper, abstract and introduction, as I told you before. Raise your hand. Abstract and introduction. OK. Mm. Some people. So or, already you guys understand the, why they start this experiment. And then during the experiment, what kind of new things they found. This is their summary. So when s tissue, especially skin, are stretched in here, left and right, we already know that to avoid, to follow the strain avoidance or stress fiber kinetics, the cell aligned perpendicularly to stretch direction, right? When you stretch left and right, they are perpendicularly aligned up and down. But as you can imagine, it takes some time. In here, it takes six hours. So why they align? Because of strain avoidance or stress fiber kinetics, the basic knowledge is to protect themselves, the cell. Because when cell feel much external force, the DNA damage can, come, can be coming out. So while they are perpendicularly aligned, it takes some time to avoid the external force. In that case, cell use the chromatin structure to release, to relieve their stress. This is their original finding. But uh, I think that uh, during the experiment, they found this phenomenon. And that they found, they established this hypothesis, not from the beginning, but now, this is published 2012 by the Sarah Wingstrom. And then, this Sarah Wingstrom already published in Nature Cell Biology using same similar cell, epithelial cell. But here, they are using biaxial force. Somehow, somehow, this Wingstrom scientists, they are focusing on how the stretch can introduce certain change in epithelial cell, especially. And then during this uh, mechanical transduction from the stretch to the epithelial cell, they try to understand how this force affects the nuclear chromatic structure and consequent biological activities. Here, they briefly mentioned that when they are stretch, set a stretch, histone 3, 27, methylation 3, the level is changed from the 9 to 27. And then most of the mechanosensing protein, protein, laminin, amorin are involved to react the external force. And then this reaction can cause some RNA polymerase 2, which is a, pro which is a protein to start the transcription of the gene. Okay, so just you understand, these scientists, women scientists, are very good, talented person who are working on this external force and epithelial cell. So this is Wingstrom, Sarah Wingstrom. So Sarah Wingstrom is uh, here. They mentioned that she joined newly from the last year in. Max Planck Institute in Germany. So in April, uh, so before before he she joined this Max Planck Institute, she joined from Helsinki to 
Munster with one junior group leader and A. Uh, in April 2012-2, Wingstrom will move from Helsinki to Munster with one junior group leader and four postdocs. He has previously spent quite a few years at Max Planck Society from 2005-2010 as a postdoc. And now, she is leading a group manager in this group. So Wingstrom began her career in Helsinki, Finland. She studied the medicine in University of Helsinki, completed the MD PhD program, and then graduate doctor degree 2004, and then joined this group, Max Planck group. And then now she's coming back to Max Planck as a group leader. So as you can imagine, she's one of the best MD PhD scientists in mechanical biology section. So it's good to follow her paper. And then you guys can analyze your view in terms of mechanical transduction. So the underlying question is, OK, we know that epigenetic change can occur by external force. And then this is only for biological change. This is, this is general concept. But here, they mention this epigenetic change can be induced for physical defense mechanism. Mm. So most of the people, they focus on, oh, epigenetic change that can be done for biological change, for express certain cell lineage expression gene. But here, along with that biological point of view, physical defense mechanism, this is one of the role of epigenetic change. OK? So new role of epigenetic change was suggested as a physical defense in this paper. So this is a very highlighted point in paper. So when you look at yourself using some material or external force, you guys have to imagine, OK, not only biological change, but also their defense or their adaptation behavior can be done by this epigenetic change. OK, and then let's focus on our paper. So let's read this brief. When tissue are stretched, for example, skin, cell is spun by two distinct mechanosensory mechanisms to protect the genome from damage and then maintain tissue homeostasis. First, rapid heterochromatin mediated mechanosensing independent of non-cellular mechanical sensor, derives calcium-dependent nuclear softening. If the mechanical stress persists a second, tissue level reorganization occurs, mediated by cell-cell contact to reduce, redistribute the mechanical energy to prevent forced transmission to nucleus. So there are two genome protection mechanisms. First, rapid heterochromatin mediated mechanosensing and then they derive nuclear softening when their external force when the nucleus is reacting against the external force dna damage can occur so they want to avoid it so by themselves the nucleus by the cell the cell soften the nucleus by heterochromatin change. And then second, while initially while they're avoiding this external force to reduce DNA damage, they continuously change their morphology. And then by in here, because of this epithelial cell with high cell cell contact, they redistribute their actin or their cytoskeleton structure perpendicular to the external force. So this is the second mechanism to avoid external force. So why this thing happen easily in skin? So as you know, skin, when skin is damaged, some damaged skin, damaged keratinocyte can go to tumor easily, right? And then skin is always feel the external force. And then skin is a, a finer barrier of the human body, OK? So they should resist their formation firmly. 
So that is why here they mention in introduction this skin cell, they have to have this very strong homeostasis mechanism to avoid the external force induced DNA damage. Okay? But this phenomenon also easily can be applied in our another type of cell, like endocellular cell, muscle cell, fibroblast. You can imagine any things. Because this concept, this paper recently published 2012. So if you find similar or some similar phenomena about different, different biological mechanism, yeah, that can be also a good study. So highlight point is stretch triggers amplitude dependent supracellular and nuclear mechanical responses. Supracellular means that not single cell, but bunch of cell cluster. H3 K9 methylation 3 heterochromatin mediates nucleus stiffness and membrane tension, which means high H3 K9 methylation 3, high nucleus stiffness, high membrane tension. So here, when they want to decrease their tension from the stretch, they want to decrease H3 K9 methylation 3 to decrease nuclear softness, nuclear stiffness, and membrane tension. And then this kind of change can be triggered by calcium uptake. Actually, this, we can say this is a calcium release from the nucleus or ER structure. And then, as a second mechanism, cellular cluster alignment redistributes stress to restore the chromatin state. And then, initially, this k 3 is down, but while they are fully aligned perpendicularly to external force, kinematin 3 is coming back to restore their chromatin state. Okay? So let's see in detail figure. So here they culture the epithelial cell stem cell. Oh, actually, what is the difference of epithelial cell, epithelial stem cell? Epithelial cell is, we can easily call it keratinocyte, the outermost layer component cell. But in skin, there are multi layer. Outermost layer is no nucleus. But innermost layer of the skin, they are called basal cell. Basal cell has stemness. So, but as you know, always you can get some debris in your skin when you shower and when you wipe up your skin, which means every day skin is growing up to the outer side, okay? Which means there are some stem cells which are continuously proliferate. So they are using epithelial stem cell cause the stem cell should be, should react easily and then they are culturable. Differentiated keratinocyte, they didn't proliferate. So they, have, they don't have any choice to use keratinocyte stem cell. So here, when they culture, this keratinocyte always, they have cell-cell interaction, okay? Similar to endocellular cell. But mesenchyma cell and fibroblast, they are, si they are singly played, okay? Most of the time. But this epithelial cell, they should communicate cell-cell. They Uniaxial left and right stretch, five to forty percent, and they under calcium enough calcium amount, which is maintaining the cell -to interaction, and then integrin to cell to ECM, and then they stretch the this cell using our flexor system, thirty, sixty, three hour, six hour, and then check their how their cell are aligned. This is 0%, 5-40%. As you can see, 30 minutes, three, uh, 6 hours, 30 minutes, later, they start to change their alignment. This is 100% aligned perpendicularly. 0% without any stretch, they are random. But 5%, mm, just not like that, okay? So they can set 40% you, they can detect the alignment. But they mentioned that actually 40% is very high tension, which is enough to damage the cell, like DNA damage. 
So they want to know how this extremely high force, high stretch, the cell behave against them. They want to know. So first, the actin, they check. And then what, what kind of check? They, they uh, check the nuclear as, I mean, cell. So this is nuclear aspect ratio. Nucleus, they are more elongated, right? Aspect ratio high means yeah, nuclear shape parameter like that, A, B, and C. Aspect ratio high means more elongated. And then flatness index, C divided by B, they are more flat. Okay, so from the nucleus point, they want to analyze. This is left is their cytoskeleton and cell morphology. And then now they check e cadherin to check the cell cell interaction. From the cadherin, as you can see, without any stretch, randomly this this is cadherin randomly position. But during the stretch, especially six hours later, this cadherin is 45 degree to this stretch line, right? So 45 degree is highly detected, which means when this cell are uh, aligned, the direction perpendicularly, this cell interaction is 45 degree to minimize the, their stress. And then they want to deeply what kind of things are especially detected. They found out that when you look at the zero percent stretch, nucleus, nucleus, there is not much of uh, perinuclear. Perinuclear means nuclear I and mean, actin surrounding the nucleus. Here, there is not much. Okay, here, little like scattering but not very strong circle shape. But here, you can definitely see this kind of round shape in the nuclear, in the actin, right? This is perinuclear actin. They especially found this perinuclear actin, 5% stretch condition, and then prolonged six hours. Here, 40%, initially you can see perinuclear, and they are totally gone. Only the actin, fiber perpendicular to stretch they can detect. So this is some they they said this is a marker of external force reaction. So five percent over time perinuclear actin intensity increase and about forty percent at a certain minute quickly going up and they are disappear. So they think then oh why this is needed and then why they disappear? On this question they analyze deeply the postpolation proteomics. So we already know that RNA sequencing, gene expression, actin sequencing, which kind of DNA is open, and then chip sequencing, which kind of histone protein are, are attached, attached to a certain DNA part. This is, uh, this is the postpolation proteomics. Uh, which kind of protein is most, mostly postpolated? So using this postpolation proteomics, there are four three conditions without stretch, and then 30 minute stretch, six hour stretch. And then they're making cluster from triplicate analysis. So here, you can easily find this number cluster one and two. One is, what is that? So this green one is blue, and violet color is down, green one is up, up, postpolation, going down. And then six hours later, they're going up again. This is one cluster they imagine, they assigned. Another cluster is once they are going down, they are they relatively maintain. This is cluster two. Okay? Because we, we previously we found that 30 minutes and six hours, what is that? This perinuclear actin, their temporary change, right? This is related to temporary change in cluster one. And then some this perpendicularly alignment is continuous behavior, right? It's continuous behavior. 
This is related to cluster 2. So they want to know cluster 1 and 2, what kind of biological things are there. And then they found out temporal, temporal change from the cluster 1. They detect histometylation change, cytolocalization change, especially K, H3K9 methylation regulation. Okay, so we can we can imagine this is related to certain histone methylation change. So they found a clue to link their finding to histone 3K9 methylation. And then closer to is continuous alignment change along with the perpendicular and along with the stretch direction perpendicularly. This is related to a cell cell junction assembly and the hemidesmosome assembly. Especially cell cell junction assembly, as you imagine, this is a cell cell interaction. So we can uh, simply think that this is because of cell cell, inter cell, cell interaction, this alignment. Okay? So there are two different clusters. From the number one cluster, they could find a clue to check the history 3K9 methylation 2 3, which is already a well known repressor histone. Repressor means down regulated gene, previously as a biological way. So they found out 5% stretch, 50% and 40% stretch condition, especially when you look at the 50% uh, what happened? Without stretch, K9 very high. But 40%, they are decreasing. And then after six hours later, they're coming back. But in case of 5%, they're continuously decreasing their K9 methylation 3. Oh, what is that? But as a time point match, this decreasing on K9 methylation 3 could be related to this periactin existence, right? So, oh, they found, oh, this very interesting finding. They are suddenly temporarily going down and going up again. So they feel like, oh, this change might be related to their defense mechanism in, in their deep mind. They can catch this idea. Maybe this can be something related to their mechanism. So next, they want to know, why is there this lower of the histone 3 k 9 methylation 3 so they, they did it, did chip sequencing. Chip sequencing means they collect the histone 3 k 9 methylation 2, 3 protein. And in this protein, they are already bind to certain DNA part. So when they pull down this protein and then analyze what kind of DNA is attached to this protein, this is a chip seek. Okay? From the chip seek, without stretch, with stretch at 30 minutes, uh, they, found out, they found out that this is, this is a total sum of them is one, like 100%. So when you see the all identified peaks from the H3 k 9 3 most of them are related to intergenic long non-coding RNA. And then protein coding is, it means that when this protein is attached to a certain site, depending on the DNA location, some location is related to coding location. Some location is non-coding location. So around 30% is protein coding location, but another 70% non-coding location. So interestingly, this histone 3 k 3 all identified peaks over like two-fold change. Most of them, 30%, are related to non-coding region. Which means, coding region means strongly related to gene expression. Especially this histone 3K9 K9 methylation repressed the, that, that gene. But what is the meaning of this other part? So, and then from the all identified genes, peaks down and up similarly. But especially when this peaks up is related to protein coding which means that uh, picks up means this 40% 30 minute stretch condition, H3K9 methylation 3, highly accessible, highly attached to this protein coding to repress the gene expression. Cause this 
up peaks means this 40% is more, more detected. And then the load of the histosteric K9 methylation 3 is depressed the gene. So while they are depressing the gene overall, this another non coding attached histosteric K9 methylation 3, they have certain load. And then before going that deeply, they analyze, pick up, not much of difference depending on the chromosome position, but pick down, pick down in 40%, they're specially local, localized in edge part of the chromatin, chromosome. So this chromosome edge part is already known to highly, a set of highly attached to histone 3, K9 methylation 3. Okay, so, and as you know, this part is related to telomere, not related to protein coding region. So pick down 40% and then this edge uh, part of chromatin chromosome position is somehow related to defense mechanism, not gene expression, gene expression level. So from this A, B, and C, they slowly, slowly narrow down the, the load of this histone 3 k 3 down in this chromatin structure, not related to the protein, protein expression, G expression, but related to certain another defense mechanism. Okay. And then they found out the, they found out these three representative gene, like low, lean, and she, she something. They are mostly down attached, which means histone 3 k 9 3 is less attached to this, this DNA part. Okay? So conceptually, when they're less attached to the DNA part, histone 3 k 9 3 is repressor, so they enhance the RNA expression. This is common sense, right? But when they analyze x-axis RNA sequencing, this is some transcription level gene expression. Y axis, the K9 methylation 3 chip, how they are attached to certain gene part. So let's say normally RNA sequencing, after RNA sequencing, when certain genes are highly unregulated, this K9 methylation 3 is less attached. Okay? So they should have negative correlation. Okay, but here, left and right, there is no relationship. R square is how they are correlated each other, but correlation almost zero. Correlation one is highly correlate. When, you, when we see like point, over point 0.3, we can say that at least they have certain correlation, but they only correlate 0 point 0.0, which means no correlation. So we can say that this change of 30 minutes and this six hour time point, as you can imagine three and gene expression, no relationship. And then what does it mean? This meaning that can imagine three is not because of gene expression level, but because of other defense mechanism, they have played low. And then from this uh, upper panel, there you can find these great things. Great things is from this maybe 20 or 30 sounds of, sounds of detective gene. This is a co expressed gene. Co expressed gene, they found out 30 and 6 hours, like previous figure one, 30 minutes related to cell cell interaction, cell contact zone using David analysis, geo analysis. So this correlate are even this they are not correlate each other but co expressed co differentially expressed gene from the RNA sequencing at your histone 3 cannabis methylation 3 this is detected oh so 30 minutes cannabis methylation 3 induced RNA RNA gene expression is related to cell cell contact zone and then after 6 hours later 
nucleate chromatin and anchor junction also detected. So, and then you can find that 30 minutes, this is six hour, 30 minutes you can find out many adhesion and such skeleton related gene are expressed in RNA sequencing. And then this six hour K9, 3 K9 20 semiclation 3 is down regulated. Here they mentioned previously 2016 Nature Cell Biology, they found that this K9 27 and the K9 3, they, they have some interplay each other. So along with their previous paper, K H3 K9 27 3 is also involved in their feature. And then they go deeply to the nucleus. So previously, they, they strongly support their national cell aligned six hours later. 30 minutes later, H3K9, H3K3, they can, they can go down. What's the role of that? In figure two, they found out their role is not related to the gene expression. And then, what is that? Might be about some defense mechanism. They want to know that. So, not only the histogenic methylation 3, but already well-known mechanical transduction protein, they checked the laminase. Laminase wrinkled nuclear envelope. Wrinkled means this is wrinkled. This is intact. This is wrinkled. Like in intercenter area, you can see this kind of very strong line. And some little, little dot here. This is wrinkled structure. Wrinkled structure is a whole marker of the DNA damage previously well known. So winkled means not good for the cell. So winkled, 5%, winkled cell percentage, they are enhanced. But 40%, they're going up and then going down. So, oh, this also similarly happened to other perinuclear actin and the history 3 k methylation 3 expression. And then when they look at the nuclear envelope, laminase in detail, using storm imaging, without stretch, but they're very intact, and the 40%, 30 minutes, they're like that, yeah. And then three, six hours later, they are coming back. So you can imagine, oh, why laminase is there changed like that? This is also another wrinkle structure. So when they're wrinkled, you can imagine this is very intact. Intact means they are under certain nuclear tension. Okay? When you when let's imagine when you have some line in your hand, when you stretch it, they are tension, they are, they are straight. But when you lose your tension, what happened? This elastomer they are wrinkled a little bit. So this is a wink that kind of wrinkle. And then they are going back, stretch as intact. So they feel that, oh, this wrinkling might be related to nuclear tension release, okay? Because they just imagine. And then in SIM SIM imaging, they found a detail. This k 3 laminase level, they are highly co-localized in edge area. This is originally, uh, original, most of the cell, k 3 is is highly localized in edge area. But this edge, this is three K9 3 they are gone to 30 minutes later. They are gone, right? And then they are coming back to edge here. Even though we can say they are dominant in edge, but also edge inside certain part is dominant. But previously very well known that the K9 3 is highly located in edge area to maintain the structure and then to repress certain gene in lamin associate site. But 30 minutes stretch condition, they are all gone quickly. Also, we can also imagine this quickly move of this methane 3 to the edge to other site might be related to this nuclear envelope ankling 
and other things. And the, when you confirm by TM images, so TM, this is, this is nucleus, okay? And then this is uh, this nucleus, and this highly, you can see highly condensed chromatin structure surrounding the edge of nuclear membrane area. But compared to this 0%, 30 minutes, actually overall density is high here, right? This is more white and black, but overall they are very scattered. But you can see this kind of large uh, amount of the black dot not found that much. But here, six hours later, you can see more this kind of black, black, large area here. So this is marker of heterochromatin. When you look at the TM images, this is a euchromatin structure. This is heterochromatin structure. Okay? So lamin associated heterochromatin, they quantify this. Lamin means this edge of the nucleus. So how, what so this area of this they quantify as a percentage. And then compared to this one, this is their large more. You can see this is more accumulated in the Lamy associated. So Lamy associated means that mm, they are attaching to the edge of the nucleus membrane and the, which is previously well known for depress, repressing the gene expression. And then theoretically we found that oh euchromatin structure comes out 30 minutes later, six hours they're going back. So maybe this history three came as you can imagine, which is more highly nuclear, high nuclear stiffness, 30 minutes at six hours. This euchromatin looks more soft because history came at the three, they are highly deposited in outer area high chromosome density, which can have more stiffness of nucleus. So they confirm six hours later, nucleus, nucleus stiffness maintained. But 30 minutes stretch, they're going down, even in 5% stretch. So which means that previous nuclear protein laminate C winkling, and then K9 methylene 3 shift from the edge to the center, less lamin associated heterochromatin, all related to the nuclear softening. Okay? Why they need nuclear softening? To resist the external force. When they maintain the nucleus hardly to external force, DNA easily can be damaged. Okay? Strong, strong, they can damage. When they fight strongly, there is their digester, but the external force they cannot change. In that case, the inside of cell component in this time nucleus they change their elasticity to maintain their homeostasis, homeostasis to decrease the DNA damage. And then this is a flip study to check the nuclear membrane tension. So low lifetime means more high. Sorry. Less, less lifetime means less tension. So you can see after 30 minutes later, less lifetime, this is less tension is occurring in this nucleus. So overall, we can say that histocytokinamide metronome 3 change from edge to center area is related to decrease their nuclear elast elasticity as well as nuclear tension decreasing. And then, okay, they want to know, and then which kind of uh, eraser or modifier is involved? Cause this set DB1 and SUV39 is related to histone 3 methylate and methyl transferase. Methyl transferase means that increase the histone methylation 3, K9. So here, the original, per 30 minutes and 5% and 40%, this uh, set, set TB1 is maybe methyl transferase? Oh, sorry. Mm. 
sorry, so this upper protein, maybe this is a uh, demethylase. Demethylase is decrease the methylation, they never change. But increase the methylation protein, they're going down. Okay, 5% and 40% 30 million. And then going on again, this six hour. So we can say that this SUV is highly related to this hour phenomenon as a key protein to regulate heterochromatin histone methylation. Ah, uh, sorry. This SUV is, uh, uh, right, right. This is a uh, methyl transferase. Increase the methylation, so they are decreasing methylation. So histone three K N methylation is decreasing. So here, they want to check why is the role of this SUV protein. So they transfect the cell as a control CFP and as an experiment SUV. So this is a, a your first. At a glance, it's not easy to follow, but I will, I will explain. You can only see the GFP positive here, okay? Zero, 30 minutes, three, three, six hours later. Laminase here, this, this, and then cannabis 3 originally like that, okay? And then compared to this, little bit going down, little bit going down, and then little bit here, this site maintained, okay? Not as much as previous without GFP transfection, but here they all, we have to only focus GFP transfected cell as a control. Cause this, uh, when you transfect a cell, they are not 100%. And then we, what you want to know the role of a certain protein after transfection, and then this is on their biological assay only focus on, on transfected cell, okay? Here, this cell, here, these two, uh, these two cell, they are going down, and then these two cell, they are coming back, okay? But when you look at SUV, SUV is transfected. They, this is a uh, metal transferase, so high methylation, very high, 30 minute, also maintained, but other part, they are gone. And then from this discrepancy between all gone existence, we can know the load of the SUV, okay? And then here, also compared to others, they are also going up because they are SUV positive. So here we can say that when they externally introduce this SUV protein in the cell, can I three? They are not going down. In other way, SV <laughs> dependently, can I three is changed. So this is their quantification. So GFP as a control group going down and up, but SV they are maintained because of the power of the SV. They continuously methylate methylase the histocytic methylation. And then cell with wrinkled. This is normal. More wrinkle going down, but no wrinkle change. And nuclear elastomodulus also, they're going down, but they, they, they never change. To, to see that this SV is in, high, highly involved in this feature. And then finally, they check the Gamma H2AX is a marker of DNA damage. Okay? This is a control group, only GFP. Okay? GFP control group, there is no DNA damage. Okay? Because why 30 minutes later, histone 3 k 9 material 3 going down, so their nucleus can be softened. Because of softening, they, they, they don't have any DNA damage. But six hours later, can have methylation 3, they are going up, but their cell align perpendicularly. So from the alignment, they relieve their stress, so no DNA damage. But what happened to SUV? SUV, this is okay, but when SUV is maintained, 
to maintain the histocytic canine maintenance rate high, they start to show cell damage, DNA damage. Okay? And they are maintained relatively. So we confirm our hypothesis. Control cell for maintaining the decrease the DNA damage, cell their change. Histocytic canine maintenance rate initially, cell alignment, but if we inhibit this histocytic canine maintenance rate change by overexpression of SUV, they start to show DNA damage. So they prove their concept, and then this is their uh, their their fluctuation mean square displacement. 30 minutes, they are more displacement. Why? They have less nuclear tension. Lamin acid wrinkling. This is a marker of their dynamics. They can dynamically move easily to resist the external force to relieve their stress. So up to now, they are mainly focused on the DNA damage or stretch, histocytic kinetic maintenance rate. And then now, they focus on the second part, how they are aligned perpendicularly. So as we saw the geo term, gene ontology, they highlight the cell-cell interaction. So SI control, without controlling, they are over time, they align, we already observed. But when they knock down the alpha catenin, alpha catenin is key protein to link cell cell interaction. When they knock down, decrease alpha catenin protein amount, the cell perpendicular alignment, you cannot see. Okay. And then this going down up. This going down up is occurred in control. But in SI, alpha catenin going down similarly occur, but they're not going up, okay? So here, the second part, cell alignment, is heavily involved in cell-cell interaction. Now this interaction is important to regulate the late going restoration of the histone 3 kinematin 3 okay? This is their quantification. And now, they want to know in more deeply the, what is the calcium level. Already, calcium is very well known mm. for changing the cell morphology or cell behavior. So while the stretch starts to stretch, calcium level blue is more detected, as you can see here. Mm. So actually, previously, it, it is already well known by the mechanism. Alpha cotton load is very well known. So they want to know deeply one more time, one more deep. So, they focus on the calcium, intracellular calcium level is enhanced. This is already well known. But from the well known mechanism, they want to know the involvement of the mechanical sensing receptor, which is pH 1 and 2. So here, control group going down and up, k 3 But when they treat gadolinium, inhibitor of the mechanical ion channel, Inhibitor of, inhibitor of mechanical ion channel, they maintained. Which means that this mechanical ion channel is involved to regulate histocytic kinetic maintenance 3. Okay? So in supplementary data, the calcium level is also not coming, out, coming, coming up. Also, because of uh, ion channel inhibitor, mechanical sensing ion channel inhibitor, perinucleolectin. You cannot see perinucleolectin here, but here you can see the round shape here. And then gamma H2AX, the DNA damage, highly detected when ion channel is blocked. It, which means this mechanical sensing ion channel induce calcium is very important to regulate their uh, DNA damage defense mechanism. Okay, not only histocytic kinematin three but also this calcium is very important. So they narrow down the pH 1. Because pH 2, their normal basal disease pressure is very low in the epithelial cell. So they focus on pH 1. SI control, this normal obser observation. pH 1 is knocked down, no change. No change, and then 
DNA that means it's going up. Okay? So which means that uh, this page one induced calcium increase in intracellular level is very important as a second messenger mechanism. And then when you look at uh, this case, micrometer, oh. maybe this is maybe nucleus or cell, I'm not sure, let's see, K, K is, yeah, nuclear radius. Okay, when you look at the nuclear radius, it is um, one part about calcium, nuclear radius, prep, a stretch, as you know, when they are stretched, nuclear is enlarged in 2D direction. But when SUV, what is that? Metallase maintained. This stretch, we can imagine, K9 metal 3 is going down. So nuclear is softened. And then their nuclear radius change. Here, they continuously, K9 metal 3 going up. So they are not tension release. So their change of nuclear radius is not that much. So they confirm their previous finding. Nuclear tension release is important to regulate this nuclear radius as well. And then they want to know, okay, the calcium in S intercellular level is okay. And then where this comes, where does this calcium from? So, as a control, DMS treated stretch in hands of calcium from the 100 cell. But this drug, they already release all of the calcium from ER. And then they stretch it, no increase, which means that this stretch in this calcium is from the ER structure. Oh, actually, ER is a very well known calcium reserver. So this already, we can easily expect it. But in, in supplementary, when they also deplete the extracellular calcium level, also they can show this kind of increase of calcium. So they want to know, this calcium is from the outside or inside? So always, if we want to say, calcium is enhanced in cell, we have to say that from the inside of cell or outside, outside of cell. So inside of cell, calcium is induced. So we can say that this PHO, not only detected in the cell membrane, but also detected in the ER nucleus. Okay, so we can say this PHO is PHO in ER. PHO in ER they can induce calcium increase on the stretch, and then this BAPTA AM, so intracellular calcium scavenger. When you remove all calcium level in intracellular calcium level, is three kinematic three also not detected. And then you can imagine which one is which one is upstream, calcium or history three. Calcium, right? When calcium is depleted, kinematic three is not coming out, change. So we can say calcium upstream, and then next kinematic three, and then next nuclear softening, blah blah blah. So we are almost done. So prove their concept. Okay, this kind of calcium induced um, nuclear softening is is not is really okay. We can know. So this is not only from the stretch, but also from other external force. Is it happening? They ask. So now they compress the cell. Okay, compress cell, and then when they compress. Also, k 9 3 is gone. And then, when they depleted calcium, they never change here. So they can say that, oh, this, this is not only stretch, but also all of the, all of the external force induced phenomenon, this kind of defense mechanism. And then they want to know the law of the Lyman AC. This is a very interesting finding. So they, they chose four different cells, EPC, epithelial progenitor cell, MSC, mesenchymal cell, and then two cancer cell lines. As you already know that, cancer cell relatively has less laminase level. 
because they are more migrating, okay, and the more uh, and then less nuclear stiffness. This is very, very well known. Actually, cancer tissue very high stiffness, but cancer cell itself they are low stiffness. So compared to this, we can see they are more high up. Lyme intensity, okay, compared to the other cancer cell. And then while they are stretch, okay, while they stretch, what happened? Not much of a change occur in terms of Lyme C, right? And then they check the nuclear elasticity. As you expect, these two cells are relatively higher than cancer cell. Okay, in that condition, they check the K9 material 3 after stretch. As you expect, like epithelial cell, normal cell line, mesenchymal cell, epithelial parental cell, they are going down. Okay. But what happened to cancer cell? They never change. Which means for regulating histone 3, K9 material 3 mediated nuclear softening, for that, the cell should have minimum laminacy amount. When they have less laminacy, they are already soft. So they don't need to react to external force. Okay? In, in the case, cancer cell, they are already very soft cell, soft nucleus. So they are easy to fluctuate or dynamically behave from the external force. They are already. And then here, F, mm, this is uh, F is which, uh, which cell? F is uh, ST. Yeah, this is cancer cell. So cancer cell, when they stretch, no change of k 9 3 we already observe. And then hash level also doesn't change. But when we externally reinforce the laminacy level using transfection, the Cash level is going up, okay? So, which means that, as you know, calcium is upstream, right? Calcium and then canamitin 3, they are behave. So, canamitin 3 doesn't change, and the calcium doesn't change. Only when this cancer cell have a high laminase level, they start to show stretch-induced calcium increase. And then, might be, canamitin 3 can go down, okay? So, canamitin 3 go down, is detected in supplementary data. They prove it. And here, from the normal cell, I'm uh, sorry, this one. This one, their cancer cell, the stretch, no change, but after inducing more laminated level, they start to go down. Can I maintain this level here, right? Then here, they are using normal cell line, normal cell. SK MSC, and then normal cell line, and then they reduce the laminacy amount, similar to the cancer cell. As you expect, normal situation going down and up, but when they reduce laminacy, they never change, similar to cancer cell. So which means this cell, so this figure, this figure, this is for generalization. So when you want to publish in good journal, after finding one strong evidence, you have to think about how you generalize this concept. How to generalize? They change the uh, force direction. Down is stretch, force the compression. Then they generalize the stretch and they generalize the force. And then they generalize this concept, not only epithelial cell, but also cancer cell, other fibroblasts, vesicamal cell, also similar thing happen. Okay? So this is how you increase your impact. So I want you guys to know this concept. And then finally, in vivo. Uh, actually, I just focus on in vivo first. This is in vivo. From the, uh, okay, here, in vivo, they check caspide 3. This is a marker of the, uh, DNA, maybe DNA damage, DNA damage, and then this is canamitin 2,3. 3 
So they collect the tissue from the larva, certain frog-like frog animal, and then they stretch it using their stretch condition. As you already know, caspase 3 DNA damage doesn't occur. Okay, but meanwhile, methylation 2, 3 going down and up. Meanwhile, tissue is aligned parallel to the stretch, stretch direction. We already know that, right? In 3D, they align by stretch, along its stretch. So going down, and along its stretch, they conform. And then K, during the development, this is also occurring. During the development, they focus on this digit part. This digit is relatively high compressed by external force here. So while this, your finger is growing, this part they focus on, and then they found out that compared to distal, this edge, this fold, they are more compressed. And then when they are more compressed, they need defense mechanism. During development, they, the cell very much growing, very fast. And then they have to feel, they felt very high compression force. In that case, kinematin 3 is continuously going down to avoid the resistance from the external force, from compression. So they finalized their mechanism in in vivo tissue, two different models. And the upper part is they just play with their this perpendicular change. As you can imagine, once they are stretched uh, this condition, they align perpendicularly, right? And then they again stretch along with that this same direction or a different direction. As you can expect, this direction, they maintain this alignment, left and right. But when they change this stretch from this to left and right, what happened? This again, perpendicularly, right? So here they mention, they observe their parallel stretch, uh, uh, sorry, par parallel, st uh, parallel stretch, mm. strain direction, perpendicularly react stretch. Okay, let's focus on this. Here, uh, this is, ah, this is normal. Means 0% without stretch, okay. Okay, eh. you guys can see, see this one. So anyhow, the, the underlying thing is that depending on the stretch direction, they continuously change their alignment. This is their just another finding. So overall, so I want you to know, so they have many supplementary data like, but they are all focusing on how you like, so Vesembla, many Vesembla data to support this ICC, and then how they analyze the chip sequencing, and then their TM image, many, many things are here, and also this kind of development stage. So, we coming back to our graphical abstract. At overall reading this paper, so let's see. So cell tissue, they want to maintain their homeostasis, which means they avoid their DNA damage. How they avoid the DNA damage? From the extremely large force or large strain change. For that, initially, they need nuclear deformation. How? Histone 3, kinematin 3, they are originally located also in edge, lamin associate area, to maintain the nuclear stiffness. So, the chromatin structure, DNA plus chromatin DNA, a chromatin protein, they are one of the lorries maintain the nuclear stiffness. But when high force are induced, they want to relieve the stress. So, k 3 
they are gone. And then inside of DNA is they are open for relieve the stress. Meanwhile, perinuclear actin is another cap to protect the nucleus. They are detected. Okay? And then in this time, calcium is very important. Without calcium, this can have they they never change. So how the external force is induced? When external force is induced to the cell, somehow mechanical turn to the pathway, ER, nucleus, structure, they are tensioned. When they are tensioned, pH 1 is activated. pH 1 is activated, ER, reservoir, calcium released inside of cell, cytoplasm. Because this calcium, history kinematin 3 is gone. Okay? And then, while they are gone, actin is overcapped to nucleus. And then, while they are softening to relieve the stress, peractin cap from this mechanism, they relieve the stress. And then later, while they are perpendicularly aligned to the stretch direction, they are going back because they already always already relieve the stress. So and then this is their basal level. Okay. So this supracellular, multicellular level also here align like that. So as I say again, here this this paper they focus on the lower of the histone protein, not only for biological depressor or a biological activator, but also defense mechanism. Okay. So this is the reason why this paper is published in the cell. Okay, any question? Okay, thank you.